Hey everyone, welcome to Sequence of Instructions. Thanks for joining me. In this video, we're going to be learning all about arrays. Um, if you saw my last video on loops, I mentioned that arrays really bring out the power of a loop. So we're definitely going to be going over that, but we're also going to be talking about arrays more generally. Um, to start, an array is basically just a list of variables, or in the case of arrays, they're called elements. So we're going to store a lot of data in a single list. And rather than having a different variable name for each piece of data, we can now put them all into the single array and give it one variable name. Uh, the syntax for that is going to be var, your variable name, so I'll just call it arr for now for array, an equal sign. And now, you know, we'd store, if it was a five, there'd be a number. If it was some word, it'd be a string. Um, for an array, it's an opening square bracket followed by a closing square bracket. And this says, I'm beginning a list of elements. Um, in here is where you put the elements you want to store. I can store John, I can store numbers, I can store booleans, I can store any piece of data that I want, and I can store it in a, in a list and give it all one variable name. So now, you know, if I had like 100 of these, I don't need 100 variable names, I can have one variable name, and all my data is stored inside of it. Now, it's most effective if you store all similar pieces of data. So either store all numbers, store all strings, store all booleans, whatever, but store all the same kind. In this case, you can be storing grades. These are numbers. These represent grades I received on different tests throughout the year. You know, um, And I can have as many as I want. I can take as many tests as I want. I can store as many of these test grades as I want. And they're all stored in this one convenient package um, called an array. And I named it grades. All right. So here is my, I stored them all. I can log them. Same way that we log other variables, other pieces of data, we can log in the console. You'll see there they are. Yep, it's an array of items. Here are all the items. So beautiful. But you might be asking yourself, well, what if I just wanted to get one of them? What if I wanted to see the first grade that I got? Well, that's a great question. You can use this syntax. Say grade is the array, but if I want a single element in it, I use the same open square bracket, closing square bracket, and then I reference the location of the one I want. So here I'm going to put 3 in, and it's going to give me 73. It's going to give me this one. But wait a second. That looks like the fourth element, doesn't it? 1, 2, 3, 4. But I put a 3 in. Well, in computer science, we start counting from 0. So this 90 isn't element number 1. It's element number 0. So a way you can remember this is the index, that's what this is called. This is called the index the pointer, the location of the element you want in the array, the index is going to represent the number of elements you want to skip before you pick the element. So skipping zero elements, give me the first element you find. It's a 90. If I made it a 1, it says skipping one element, skip it. What's the next element you find? 45. 45. There it is. So that's just a helpful way to think about it. And in actuality, that's sort of where this comes from. Back in the old uh, C days when you were referencing literally memory on you know the hardware level uh, you'd be skipping over certain byte segments um, I don't want to get too much into that but it's a little bit of history for you is this is literally skipping that's how they made it is how many elements you would skip so grades of two again zero one two sixty seven there it is and now there are one two three four five six seven elements which means I can go up to six zero through six. But what if I do 7 here? In some languages, you get an error. There's like an array index out of bounds error that a lot of different languages throw. But in JavaScript, it's pretty forgiving. And it doesn't throw an error. It just says, nah, I don't know. I don't know what grades of 7 is. That value is undefined. We do not know. There is no 7th element. I don't know what it is, so it's undefined. And that's pretty helpful. Um, uh, another thing that you can do with um, arrays is they know how long they are. So you don't have to count each element. Oh, how long how can I go through? Is there eight sevens or eight? You can print the array dot length. This is going to give you the length of the array. So if I ran it now, it'll say seven. If I added an element, it'll say eight. If I took a few away, let's say I did this, five. You kind of get the idea. Um, I talked about in the beginning how these how arrays become extremely powerful when you combine them with loops. So if you haven't seen my video on loops, I encourage you to. If you need a refresher of what I'm doing right now, I encourage you to check out that video again. 
Um, right now, how many elements are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I can say less than 8, I++. Plus plus. And now I can print grades of, rather than saying a number in here, I can put the variable I. And this loop, I is going to start at 0. It's going to iterate the first time. I is going to be 0. It's going to print. It's going to execute grades of I, which is of 0. It's going to print 90. It exits the loop. It does its exiting condition. I adds 1. So now I is 1. 1 is less than 8. It's going to come back in. Now it's going to print grades of 1. It's going to print 45. It's going to keep doing this. I is going to be 2, printing grades of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Print 7. It goes 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 is not less than 8, and it leaves. So it's going to print every element in this array, um, and no more. No more and no less. So what you see is every val every element printed to the screen by using a loop. So here, 90 was the first one. 23 is the last one. There they all are. Um, and if I change the number of elements here, I'd have to update this number just to make sure I got them all. Now we got 65. Good. But if you recall what I if you recall what I just said about grade or I'm sorry, <laughs> excuse me, about arrays knowing how long they are, I can replace this number, which has to change with the size of the array, with simply grades.length. And grades.length will always give me the number of elements in the array. And so my loop will always only ever be or only ever have or run as many iterations as there are elements in the array. So if I added a ton more right up here, well, it would run a ton more, but that would be it. Or if I got rid of some, rather than seeing a bunch of undefines printed because I ran outside the bounds of my array, this ensures I never run outside the bounds of my array. There's 90, there's 90, there's 80, here's 80, and then I exit it. It's perfect for iterating over every element in an array, nothing more. And now just to really drive home the power of arrays, why is this useful? Give me a use case where this might be helpful. Well, I said these were grades, right? And I said um, I have some way to iterate through each one really quickly. So maybe I want to know what my average grade was, my average test score for the class. What I can do is I can have some variable sum start at 0, right? So I have this, I can kind of get at what I'm going for here. I'm going to have some number sum. And rather than printing the grades, I'm going to say, Sum equals sum plus grades of i. Oop, that's not how you spell sum. <laughs> okay, so it st sum starts at 0. Let's go through here. First iteration is going to give me grades of 0. First element, so it's going to be 0 plus 90 is 90. Next iteration, this is going to give me 45 because grades or i is now going to be 1. Grades of 1 is 45. So 90 plus 45 is, somebody do that math for me, 135. We save that into sum. So now sum is 135. Then we had 67. Then we had 73, 80. Blah, blah, blah. So this is doing a lot of addition really quick. Addition I won't be able to do in my head as quickly. Now at the end, I have this value sum. I can log sum. What is the sum of all my grades? It is 600. That is a. I love when numbers come out round like that, given non standard inputs. So like, you know, not fives or zeros. We got threes and twos and whatever's in here. It comes out to 100. That's great. Um, yeah, so our sum is 600. I'll stop digressing. Um, but I said I wanted the average, right? So if you remember back to your math classes, you add them all together and you divide by the total, or the, the number of them. And how many are there? There's grades.length many, right? There's eight. Is there eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, there's nine. Excuse me. So sum divided by nine. If there was another one in here, it would be added, it would be included in the sum by virtue of this loop, and we would adjust our denominator accordingly because grades at length always points to how many elements there are. And so now if we ran it. Uh, well first, let me show that the sum did indeed change by adding 23. There it is. Um, but I want to I want to console log my average, 62. That's not so great. What if I didn't fail that last test? 66.6 repeating. That's a little bit better. What if I didn't get a 23 on this one? 23 is a pretty low number. 72. So you can kind of see I can quickly find averages for values, for, for lists of values, using combination of arrays and loops. 
And that's a pretty practical use case. That's something that happens a lot if you become a professional engineer. If you are a professional engineer, you'll find yourself finding averages of things quite often. And this is one easy way to do it. All right, that's all for this video. Um, in the next video, we'll be talking about objects. Objects are kind of like arrays, but they have a few unique qualities about them. Um, so stay tuned for that. If you have any questions on this video, any of the topics we covered, please feel free to leave comments. I'll see you all next time. Take care.